another insect on the windshield on a summer night. You know what I'm saying? Splat. She went far enough. For those who want to dig for the information, they'll find it there. But even your most ardent researcher won't quote her. Because the, it's not because she's not telling the truth. It's because they're scared to death that it's real. They know it's true. But they can't talk. See, they want to go so far with the truth, but not one step over. Where is she on the Alex Jones show? He likes truth, he says. Why doesn't he expose the whole truth? Or Alan Watt or any of these other guys? Because they won't go there. They won't go that far because they fear for their lives. That's why. And so if that's... If Sue Ford's book, Thanks for the Memories, is really true... If you can find it, I think you'd find it. It costs $150. You can find a used one for... But it's, you know, you won't believe it. You'll read it and you just say, ah, I don't think Bing Crosby and Bob Hope and those guys and all. You know, well, these are people I met when I was a kid. The L.A. Mafia, we call it. Yep. Grew up in it. Know it. Know it very well. Can verify that, yeah, it's all true. So what are you going to do? You know, like my mother would say, Oh, well, 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 there's no Santa Claus. That was her response when I finally confronted her that I figured it all out and I hit her with it. And she goes, and she gets mad and she goes, oh, okay, so there's no Santa Claus. I'm sorry. <laughs> so that's the response. That's the response. Oh, this was years and years and years and years ago. And she's, she's come to, you know, she just tells me at this point, you know, all those people, all those friendships, they've all gone to the devil. There's no hope for them. And it's like, yeah, they've all gone th that way. They're not redeemed. So, you know, part of my reason for doing all this was I also minister to my mother and we pray and I pray for her, you know, to just accept the Lord and be free of uh, whatever else because, you know, you're dealing with um, a situation that is, is horrific. It, and, you know, and it deals with the elite and the moneyed and the, uh, you know, the, the politicians and the entertainers and the CEOs and the, and the corporate jet owners, as Obama refers to them. He's the biggest corporate jet owner there is, by the way. But anyway, it refers to all these people like not, not getting into, you know, what it would take to be someone like that and have the protection to be able to operate at that level of billionaire. It would be above and beyond reproach. And how does one get to that point? Well, unless you're in the system, you won't get to that point. The whole idea is to just get you to the point where you give up. The whole idea is to just get you to the point where you give up and it's like, what's the use? You know, you're dealing with you know, the grocer, the baker, the banker the rich guy, the poor guy, the cab driver, the, the neighbor, the, the friend, the son, the daughter, the mother, the father, everybody in on this thing except me? No, that's, that's the attack to make you think that way. And in thinking that way, they sort of got you. Then the next response is, okay, save me. So instead of going to Jesus for salvation, you go to them, and then what happens? It gets worse. You have protection, but then, you know, you, 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 your hands are getting dirtier and dirtier. More and more people are hurting and dying. More and more bad stuff is happening, but you're immune from it all. And, you know, if your conscience can handle that, it would have, which it can't, it would have to be seared for you to be able to go on. And yes, you do put food on the table for your family and all that, but at the same time, you've sold that there is no family for you. You don't have any sons or daughters. You don't have any wife or house or security. It's all virtual garbage. It's a game to see if you will or you won't sell your soul down the line or whether you will abide in your father, your creator. I mean, that's really the whole thing that, where all the gang stalking, the horrors of this world, the wars of this world, human trafficking, all the kind of evil thing boils down to. No, you can't corroborate um, someone like uh, Bryce Taylor's book. 
no, there's no corrupt. What are you going to do? Go to the dead people and say, corroborate this. I just know from having been in that society that what she's saying is basically true, including the UFO part, which she didn't write about the UFO. But I mean, we got through, uh, through someone that knows her verified that end of the story. So that she didn't want to write it because she didn't want to seem crazy. So she didn't want to write that. She, what, what? Okay. Here's what I heard that she was, you know, um, had flown around on these ships and at one point was like some sort of server, like a, like a cocktail waitress in a bar on a UFO. Okay. That's basically, and then I just left it off. What are you going to do with that? I have people all the time, they come to me and they go, Z, everything you said was right. It's real. I'm, I'm, I'm ducking it. You know, I'm saying, brother, you don't have to hide under a bushel basket. Stand up, walk through it. It's nothing. Jesus Christ is the power, the truth, the life, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Walk in that power and glory, my friend, and you don't have to hide your head. Do not be ashamed of yourself. Do not hide in shame that you didn't measure up in the world, in the game, in the hoops. If you jump through their hoops, it just means you're a loser in the end. It doesn't mean you're a winner. You know, it means you had some morals. It means you, you had some fear of the Lord. I had fear of the Lord. I feared that if I joined them, I'd go to hell. Yeah, I did fear that. I did fear being cut off from my friend, the Lord. When I was a little kid, he protected me. So I feared losing him. Yeah. Even at six years old, I feared that. Better to be alone and have him than in a crowd of people and have nothing and not know what my fate would be after this life. In other words, have that to be completely in jeopardy and in peril, meaning I am going to be judged. I am going to be punished forever and ever. I'm going to be eternally damned if I join forces with the evil world system that's based on lies, perversion, and disgusting filth. You know, the demons are filthy, but those are the spirits that rule these people. I mean, they're like sock puppets. And then after a while, you know, at my age now, um, basically the age of retirement, I, I see them now and they, they can't say more than pass the butter or gee, it's a nice day out. They, there's, they have no capacity for any sort of intellectual because they're afraid in the presence of one of you or a TI or whatever, they're afraid because, see, they realize they're the perps who hurt the TIs. You see, they're the ones that caused many of them to die. TI not meaning necessarily the scientific, literal gang stalking phenomenon. See, gang stalking, as it's written about online, is completely inconclusive and totally inadequate and completely untrue. So the research and the so-called experts, they don't know shit. Sorry to put it that way, but I, I've seen... I've experienced, and they're not describing what I've experienced. They're not, they're not going into it. They're, they're, they're hiding half the truth because they want it to fit a scientific paradigm, and it never will. It never will because there is no such thing that can be applied to it because it's not coming from this world. Yes, I agree, there are criminals Yes, there are guys behind computer monitor screens who may use satellites to surveil you and cameras and, and, you know, and organize you know, theatrical games. But why would they do that? Well, the only reason they would have street theater at all is to frighten you that you can't win. It's all around you. It's the whole world you know, focused on you to make you sound crazy. So therefore... And half the world's unconscious of this half the time. Then they become conscious of it. And then they're not conscious of it again. You know, what happened to you at work is not real. Then when it went back to normal, like random, then it was more real, but still not real. Both incidents are not real. The random, hi, how are you? Go to your cubicle and work versus organized stalking and mobbing at work. Neither one is real. It's impossible that unless they could have called some meeting, like a surprise birthday party, which I think those are evil too, right? You do that to a, to a person that's been traumatized, post-traumatic stress, 
which a lot of us have from all this. We've been hurt. We've been damaged. We've been traumatized. We've been scarred forever and ever by the gang stalkers, by the Satanists, by the people organizing all this. You've scarred us and you've hurt my friends and people are dead because of you. But I forgive you. I'm saying, not only do I forgive you, but because I've been forgiven, but I urge you to switch sides now because, ah, oh, there must be quite a few people, you perps listening in. Well, good. Repent to Jesus. He'll take you, but do it now and let me be kind of a, a, a helpful little bridge to get you across because otherwise he'll never talk to you again. You heard his children. You know what he said. It'd be better that a millstone were tied around your neck and you were drowned at the bottom of the sea than otherwise you would hurt one of these little ones who otherwise would believe in me. In other words, if you've taken children away and conformed them to the world, here's what it means. If you've conformed your kids to the world, Matthew 18.6 is a verse that Jesus intended for you specifically. It's just that simple because that's what this is all about. If you want that sentence of a millstone thrown around you, you know, that Jesus would drown you because he's, you, you're disgusting. If you want that status removed, then get on your face and, and accept Jesus Christ and repent of it and you'll be forgiven for that. But gosh, you're really playing a very dangerous game because you're so close to being damned Forever and ever and ever. I mean, tortured for as far out as you. I mean, you think it's dismembering and you know, then putting you back together and then dismembering you again, indefinite things like that, to putting you into a world and then, then torturing your mind to the point you can't find any, any place, drive you completely nuts, then bringing you back to sanity so they can drive you nuts again, you know, over and over and over. I just don't think you would like that. And then you wouldn't want your children to have that too just because of your curse that you've cursed them with. You have to override that curse by accepting Jesus Christ. It overturns the curse. He paid the price for you. And that's the only one in this world who ever paid the price for you, me, or anybody else for all the evils done here. The universe is perfect. If you want to talk in terms of the universe, capital U meaning to be God. But the universe is perfect. It will mete out perfect justice. It will find equilibrium. That is why you will, you will be eternally damned if you do not come under the umbrella of the blood of the Lamb and be washed clean in the blood of the Lamb. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all done evil things to one another. We've all hurt other people's feelings. We've all, you know, in some way contributed to the death of another one through, you know, maybe they committed suicide. Maybe we said a, a word that we shouldn't have or hurt our children. And then we don't talk again. You know, who knows what it is? There's not one person that doesn't need the blood of Jesus Christ right now. That's the whole point. There's no point of me standing up here talking if it isn't for you to submit, if it isn't to show you the way out of your predicament. Why would I want to expose you as perps No, the elites, I don't, you know, I've said my thing about the elites. I've like I said, I've been around the elites. I understand that to move up the ladder, you got to do bad things. I, I, you know, like my mother said so many years ago when I was a child, well, so there's no Santa Claus. In other words, you know, this is the way it is. Sorry, I can't protect you from this. She's saying to me, this, this is what the, uh, this is, you know, you can either do as in Rome or you can fight it. It's your choice. And that's what she always said to me. It's your choice. No. But if you choose to fight it and you're miserable, don't come crying to me because it's your choice. So that's kind of like, you know, growing up 101, right? Growing up means you see the situation and you make a choice and then you take responsibility for that choice, whether to fight it or to go with it. Whichever way you decide, you live with that choice. If you want to switch side, then you live with that choice. There is a way out for you. I know that you prospered all your life from the dark side, which you call, you know, the liberated side. I don't, there's no guarantee by taking the blood of Jesus Christ and, and serving him, becoming his bondservant, his slave, basically. He will bind you into freedom eternally. Satan will 
free you into bondage eternally. Make your choice. But gang stalking, criminality, human trafficking, UFOs, this virtual game reality, stalking, surveillance, all that stuff is going on all the time. We are in a, we're in a test tube. We're being watched 24-7 by both sides. And, you know, and that's just the, really uh, the way it is. This is, uh, world was created so that we could go through this test. You don't want to fail the test because what it means is, it, I mean, God, I believe that he says what he means and means what he says. If Daniel the prophet is given a prophecy that, that uh, you, you know, you're either resurrected to everlasting um, to shine like the stars in heaven forever and ever, or to eternal damnation, I would, wouldn't, you know, and Jesus talks about fearing the one that can cast you in, into hell, not the one that can hurt your body. Satan can hurt your body, but it's the Lord that can cast your soul into hell. Satan can't do that. It's, in the end, the only thing that's real is the soul. It's the only real commodity here on earth that's worth a dang. And, you know, it's the thing that all the fuss is about. Okay? The, the, the whole existence we're in is because of that soul. It's all revolving around, you know, God's will and the human soul. Jesus Christ, redemption versus the way of the world, which is, has to be maximum evil. I'm on the side of children being, being able to live safely from adult predators. I'm on the side of churches teaching the gospel as it is, teaching about reality of the things I've said today, you know, you know teaching the whole truth so that people, the way I've laid it out today shows that you only have one choice. I've laid it out in such a way that it should make complete, perfect sense to you which way to go. Not to make myself, you know, I suppose I make myself a spec, at this point in my age, regard, you know, who cares about all the incidents I have? I'm an old man now. And all the incidents that have happened, all the things leading up to this, all the experiences I've had, all the places I've gone and things I've seen, okay. No, I don't want to be a master of the game. I want God to be my master. You see what I mean? Because he, without him, nothing would exist anyway. So I'm going to go back to the source. I'm going to, and if he wants me to suffer for that choice, you know, um, then all I have to conclude is that he's burnishing me. He's, he's, he's making me better. He's making me stronger. Believe you me, without the Lord, back when I was a teenager, without Jesus being in my life as he was, you know, I wouldn't be here talking this. I wouldn't be here giving this testimony. I wouldn't be here being able to tell you what, what is going on. I wouldn't be able to. Without his guiding me through back then, and I wish I had been more obedient. I wish I hadn't tried to fight it so much on my own, but I had just understood. It took me, shoot, 50 years finally to understand what this was all about. What this life was all about what the purpose of it was all about. Most of the people you run into that are on the dark, they don't have a clue. They just go, look, Satan was paying. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. I can't, you know, better you than me. If you get hurt and I don't, fine. You know, it's not my fault. And I'm just going to do the best thing I can do for my family. And I'm going to keep my mouth shut and keep my head down, keep my nose the grind, grinding stone and somehow get through it. <laughs> as Paul Simon said in, Mother and Child Reunion, another song that may, will leave you a bit mystified in terms of figuring out what that means. Uh, as he said in that famous song, it just, you know, which was actually done in Jimmy Cliff's studio in Jamaica, I believe. I was, believe it was a great reggae artist that uh, participated in that foul song. And uh, so what does that say? Where's Ja in that? In Mother and Child Reunion, where's Ja? Huh? No jaw! Oh! Big surprise! Reggae's false! Jaw, just a state of mind like groove on it. Yeah. Right. Well, anyway. 
<laughs> no, Paul Simon went down there in the Jimmy Cliff studio, uh, the same studio that records Jimmy Cliff. I get, you know, it's kind of, my memory's foggy. This song came out in 1971. And um, first I heard of it was at the, uh, and uh, while I'm sort of incarcerated back at that time. But I mean, I, that's what I heard it. And it says, the mother and child reunion is only a motion away. Well, what motion would that be? Is that what? It'd be very specific. The lyrics are very specific. The mother and child reunion. You mean the reunion with the world? You mean I just bust a move and I'm with the world, everything's cool? Is that like born to be wild or something? I mean, is it. Yeah? Ja! Hey, where's Ja? Hey, Jimmy Cliff, where's Ja, baby? <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. We have a double reality going on. I, I'm doing this kind of reggae thing and jaw thing, but then I got this other thing. Yeah, okay. Cool. Otherwise, I wouldn't be, get to be Jimmy Cliff. Wouldn't get to be Paul Simon. Wouldn't get to be John Kay. Wouldn't get to be Ringo Starr. Wouldn't get to be blah, 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 blah. You like living like that? You reggae people, you like living a double reality? Where jaw is now a joke? <laughs> Gosh. I mean, there are stupid people, you know? And, and I suppose I have to allow... Not everyone can be as intelligent as me. I don't say that as a boast. I just say that's, that's a literal truth. Not everyone can be as courageous as me. I'm courageous not because I'm courageous, but because my circumstances allowed me to be. And without those circumstances, I probably would not be courageous. So I'm, I'm, I want you to know there's no boast here. The only thing I can boast about is stripes, harm, death attempts. All the bad things that have happened helped to, to me to understand what was going on. But I mean, those are the things I can boast about. I can't vote boast of anything good because there's nothing really good in me. You know, uh, any good thing I've gotten has been from the grace of God. Any good break I've gotten has been because God made a break. Anytime something went right is because God made it go right. It has never been my... One thing I have learned is that there's nothing that I've gotten for myself. Everything's been given pretty much. You know, any kind of grace, you know, I probably, you, you know, and the trauma that I have, I will never get over having, you know, PTSD and all that kind of stuff, if that's what it is. I don't even think that's a, even a concept anymore, but I will never get over the trauma of being, having my eyes open or my soul, whatever it is that makes me empathic, you know, that I can be, I feel that I can see what the guy's doing and I can see what the priest is doing, I can see what the... I can see everything behind the scene. I mean, oh, the pain, the pain. Oh my God, the pain. So even when people talk to me, I, the, the moment they talk to me, I'm looking into their soul. I can see their family dinner. I can see their car they're driving. I can see the front door, what color it is. I can see the banister and the stair. I see the down at the racquetball court. I can see having the affair with the girl in the motel. Hey, I can see all that about you. Just even if you don't talk to me. And it brings me a lot of pain. I don't want to see it. But see, that mechanism that was given to me kept me safe. Because see, it's not what you say to me. It's what you do. It's what's in you that I react to. So hence, you have a lot of Christians staying away from me. They don't want to be seen. It's not like I'm seeing and judging. It's like, it's, that mechanism is there partially to help you with prophetic healing, which is, you know, this is a big acupuncture session today. And also, so that I know if your motives are on toward, I'll know that while you're saying, hey, Z, what's happening, man? And I'll know whether your, your intentions are positive or untoward. And some people whose tensions, intentions are untoward, I will... I will keep around for a while. Yeah. Just so you know, I'll keep you around for a while. 
So you'll never really know what I'm thinking. You'll never really know what I'm planning. You'll never even know what this is about unless you accept Jesus Christ the Lord. Then you'll be on the same page with me and that makes us brethren. When we're family, when we're brethren, then obviously uh, we share consciousness. So we share thoughts with one another. We share openly. You know, we're like open books to one another. We have nothing to hide from each other. That's very rare to find another human being in this life that you can be like that with. Most people hide. Most people are hiding something. Something that could get them in a lot of trouble had they ever mentioned it. And they want to come clean, but they're just afraid. I'm telling you, there's no judgment in the coming to the cross and laying it down. There's judgment if you don't. Jesus Christ will set you free. Right now, brother, right now, sister, accept the Lord, repent of all that stupid stuff. You know, the virtual game, you can't win, so just forget it. Jesus will have you walking over scorpions and snakes in no time, but give him a chance. I forgive. I love. I love all people. I love you. If I didn't love humanity, I would have been gone long. I said, what, what, what's, the, what's the use? I would have checked out. But I am frustrated with humanity. I, am, I don't understand why they haven't gotten this, but I do understand the enemy is fierce. The enemy wants your soul. You are a commodity to him. He wants to buy and sell you in the intergalactic community. We don't have time to go into that today. I do get that. But that just means, makes you human slave. Human chattel. Human cattle. To be boxed up in like a boxcar to Auschwitz and sent off to wherever where... Whatever makes you, you will be used to make some hybrid. I mean, or, or whatever they do. You know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's kind of above my pay grade because this is between God and Satan, God and Lucifer, whatever you want to say. It's between, <laughs> this is God's thing. I, I, you know, he'll, see, God will give you the information on a need-to-know basis to the point where you can actually speak it. Now, I urge you to go back through podcasts are done through the archives because you'll find a lot of talks like this throughout the years. Not like this, not probably not with the same precision, but you'll have other things that were said that will also be a part of the puzzle that will help you to live without going nuts. To help you to live and understand. No, it's hard to believe uh, that the um, that they would sabotage a vehicle or try to sabotage you in some way after you've been public in this way and knowing that they would be not only tagged, but their lives would be ruined. But you've got to feel sorry for people like that. As my friend Govinda said, that's it, it's over. Yeah, they, people end up really tagging themselves. And when they're tagged, that just means that their satanic ranking is gone the moment they're tagged. Bad stuff happens, they get fired, they wind up destitute. It's horrible. But I can't help it. I can't put a big sign up and say, don't touch me today because you, if you're tagged, then your life will be ruined tomorrow. So, you know, I'm the poisonous snake that you don't want to pick up. There's others out there you can probably go beat up and nothing will happen. But if you touch one of us, your life's it's over. For you, I mean, I don't want to see that... Ah, never mind. You think I'm just boasting. You think it's an idle boast. You think I'm just making it up to make myself feel better? Ha! Huh. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. I've said enough. God bless you, each one of you. And, um, I love you, and I'm praying for you. And uh, really, I love all of you, including you perps. I wouldn't be saying all this and putting my life at risk around you people. If I didn't care about you and the Paul Simons of the world and the Jimmy Cliffs and everybody, you know, I'm not mocking you. I'm just trying to make a point here that you know, needs to be made. Needs to be made for all of us. It doesn't matter about winning the game and jumping through their hoops and becoming you know, uh, fame and fortune in this life is meaningless. It's the, this is not what's going on here. What's going on here is a trying test of the human soul and the free will. You know, it's like Job. Job's a very good book to read to, 
to kind of understand. And with that, I will see you next time. Zef Daniel, the Zef Daniel version, zefdaniel.com, zedja.com, etc. You can come see me on Facebook or Twitter. You can get to all that from my page. Uh, please write to us, 5 Bisbee Court. That's 5 B I S B W Court 109, Box 16, Santa Fe, New Mexico. That's 5 Bisbee, B I S B W E, Court 109, Box 16, Santa Fe, New Mexico, 87508. And we read everything that you send in. Don't always respond like on the air. We keep you anonymous, but if you want to get a message into me that gets really 